Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Sunday, August 8th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the WBA interim world welterweight title fight at 147 pounds. Very deep division. Right? Think about the guys ruling the roost. Pacquiao, Errol Spence, Terence Crawford. Think about the guys who are in the division who don't have WBA interim world titles. Unbeaten fighters like Jaron Ennis, for example. And of course you have Sean Porter in the division. Danny Garcia in the division for now. Keith Thurman in the division. Right? Mean Machine in the division. Virgil Ortiz in the division. Well, let's talk about it. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I don't know about you, but I was absolutely shocked. I mean completely puzzled that the WBC, excuse me, the WBA, could hold an interim title fight at welterweight, and that one of the guys in the fight only had three professional fights. I was thinking, my goodness, what three guys could this guy have possibly beaten? to earn a shot at the interim WBA title, right? That fighter, Gabriel Mastre, and he's older, he's 34, somehow gets the shot at the WBA's interim title without fighting any of the guys that I just named, right? No, he fought Giovanni Barraza. Diego Chavez, and Daniel Cota. Those are the three guys he fought in his entire career. And of course, somehow, that earned him a shot at the WBA Interim World Welterweight title. Now, folks, if you think that boxing is a meritocracy, if you somehow believe that everyone getting a title shot or an interim title shot deserves it. That politics doesn't play a role. That connections don't play a role. Then in the comment section to this video, because this subject matter has baffled me for decades, please explain to this wayward boxing fan how Gabriel Mastre earned the shot at the interim welterweight title for the WBA, a major sanctioning body, right? In one of boxing's, quite frankly, deepest divisions. Put differently, among the very top prospects in the entire sport, you have Virgil Ortiz and Jaron Ennis. Both of them are in the welterweight division. How did this guy leapfrog them for this opportunity? Let me also take this moment here to congratulate Michael Fox on a masterful performance. This was a Matador performance. He's fighting Gabriel Mastre. Mastre's on his front foot. Mastre's a bull. He's trying to cut off the angles. He's trying to pin the 6 4, excuse me, 6 3 and a half, 147 pound Michael Fox up on the ropes. And Fox, right, is outboxing him, is forcing him to go through a jab, drops him in the second round is showing you movement, is protecting his body, 
right? Because keep in mind, when you're six three and a half at 147, there's a lot of body to protect. He's protecting his body against Mass Dre. He's turning Mass Dre. I thought he outboxed Mass Dre. Again, this is a matador performance. Right? Fox was the matador. He's twisting. He's turning. Guys like Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, in other words, longtime boxing guys who've seen a lot of fights, thought it was clear that Michael Fox won the fight by several rounds. Right? Of course, the scorecards came in. And, you know, one judge actually had the fight 117-110. Let's name her, Gloria Martinez Rizzo. She had it 117-110 in a fight that Lennox Lewis, former heavyweight champ, and Joe Goosen, ex esteemed trainer, had Fox winning the fight comfortably. But then, of course, they announced the decision. And, of course, the decision was in favor of Gabriel Mastre. Folks, he has four wins in his boxing career. And he's now the interim WBA welterweight champion. Right? I want folks to just digest that. I want them to ask themselves, wow, if I went to 100 people on the street, at a boxing venue, shortly after a fight. In other words, fans who are among the boxing hardcore, right? People who have come out for a boxing event or a boxing convention or a Hall of Fame induction ceremony. If I went up to 100 of those people and I said, hey, 147, that deep division, name me the interim WBA welterweight champion in the comment section of this video just hazard a guess and we're all speculating here on how many of them would pick a fighter with four wins Gabriel Mastre right it's interesting too because Mastre is 34 so you would think okay well wow um, <laughs> you know by the time you're 34, you have some signature wins against big-time opposition. What are the signature wins that Mastre has? Right, so folks, in fairness to Mastre, he did look skilled. I was impressed. I didn't know who he was. Looking at the fight, I was impressed by how he was resilient. Right, he gets off the canvas, he jumps right back into the fight. Right, there's no discouragement. There's no, oh, I've been hit, it's not my night. He's cutting off the corners. He's throwing wicked hooks to the body. He was doing some things. What he wasn't doing was winning the fight. So again, if you're one of these people who believes that boxing is a meritocracy, let me offer a counter-argument. This fight is exhibit number one. A 3-0 and fighter at welterweight got a shot at the interim WBA welterweight title. Right? Just mull that over and ask yourself how that's possible. Also, just consider the fact that Joe Goosen and Lennox Lewis saw a fight. They saw a guy win a fight, and then one judge had him losing <laughs> by seven <laughs> rounds. <laughs> As I like to say, only in boxing. This is a boxing story. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I have the highlights from the fight in my favorites folder here on YouTube. Please give it a look and please leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.